The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terrina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terrina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Two Minutes on Oriented with Tojin. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on um, Oriented with Television as well. So a lot to talk about this week. We got some pre. We're going to preview baseball and softball districts um, that's coming up this weekend. Um, some finals have already been announced already. There, we're going to also recap the Oakland County meet. Um, we're going to also recap the Oakland County meet. Also, we're going to preview the um, state meet coming up for track and field. Also, some lacrosse. Obviously, we're going to talk, of course, the um, the big one, the boys, of course, Lake Orion taking on Clarkston in the state quarterfinal. It'll be a really interesting matchup. Um, so a lot to talk about. Um, also, we're going to know um, we should have some information coming up when it regards to the coaching situation for girls basketball at North Farmington. Um, also, keep an eye on the basketball situation for boys basketball over at Rochester Adams. Um, hopefully, you know, as we get into the month of June, we're going to have some breaking news regarding um, – regarding those two respective coaching vacancies over at North Farmington and also at Rochester Adams. Um, let's go to our recap here. Obviously, our main story here is track and field. Um, obviously, when you look at track, um, recap and what happened here, um, you know, of course, we had the Oakland County meet. Of course, this was a really interesting meet, to say the least. Um, a lot of people talk about how good Rochester Adams has been all year long. Um, obviously, that senior class has been really good. Um, but they just couldn't, they ran into a buzzsaw on Wall Lake Central, who, in the boys' side, really used their dominant throwing, um, prowess and won that, and won the Oakland County meet by scoring an 81. Um, of course, Wall Lake Central's coming off a big-time momentum after winning the regional, Region 9 over at Milford last week, which featured some really good teams in, in, um, Lake Orion and West Bloomfield. Um, Clarkston also. Um, so it was a big win for Wall Lake Central that they um they gained some big time momentum, obviously, and you know, and I think that's something that really, you know, was really a surprise. I mean, like obviously with the way Wall Lake Central's been, um, everybody knows about how powerful the throwing program's been. Um, really, has been like the um the precedence of dominance when you look at of course the power that their throwing program has over there at Wild Lake Central. Um Adams took second with 66 points. Um obviously their relays. Um I'll bet you I think they were gearing up the state meet, but 66 points not bad. Troy was third with 45. Lake Orion was fourth with 44. Wild Lake Northern was fifth with 40. West Bloom was sixth with 35. Novi seventh with 30. Clarks with 26. Hazel Park and Detroit Country Day were both tied for ninth with 22 points. Oak Park was 11th with 21 points. Groves was 12th with 19 points. Oxford was 13th with 17 points. Um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and Farms were tied for 14th with 16 points. Notre Dame Preparatory um, was 16th with 15 points. Troy Athens was 17th with 14 points. Wall Lake, Lake, White Lake Lakeland was 18th with 13 points. Nobody Detroit Catholic Central was also tied for 18th with 13 points. Um, Brandon and Berkeley were tied for 20th with 12 points. North Farmington, Ferndale University were tied for 22nd with 10 points. Um, Wall Lake Western, Blue Bills, Cranbrook, Kingswood, South Lion East, Bloopy Hills were tied for 24th with 8 points. Milford was 28th with 7 points. Holly was 29th with 6 points. Avondale was 30th with 5 points. Rochester and Royal Oak were tied for 31st with Four points in Watford, Kettering, Stafford, Arson Tech, and Madison Heights Bishop Bully were tied for 33rd with one point each. So when you really look at it here, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I thought the dominance of Wall Lake Central's um, throwing program was the difference in that meet on the boys' side. Um, obviously, you know, they, they had just enough on both sides to really, you know, just show what they had. Um, credit where credit's due, though. I mean, you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, honestly, um, you got to know with what, um, you know, you got to know, obviously, Wild Lake Central, you know that you're going to have to deal with the throws threat, um, obviously, there. 
Um, the sprints, they had enough sprints and enough distance to carry that meet. I was just surprised with how, um, how it was just enough to overcome Rochester Adams's, um, you know, dominance in the, um, in the, um, mid distance relays and also in the relays, obviously, I'm um, just really surprised there. Um, also I thought Troy had a good performance. Lake Orion had a good showing as well. Um, and, um, well, Lake Northern, I mean. I was very surprised West Bloomfield. I mean, only scoring 35 points. I mean, I thought, you know, they would score more in this meet, especially what they've been doing all year long. I mean, just a little surprise there. I mean, really was um, with the impact there of how everything went. Um, but regardless, credit to All Lake Central. I mean, they found a way to win that meet. Um, you know, the Vike, I mean, the, um, you know, Adams, Troy and Lake Orion, of course, well represented the OAA in the top five. Um, West Bluefield, Clarkson, um, were in the top ten. Um, so basically, you know, credit where credit's doing the guys. I mean, like obviously, you know, um, but I will be very curious to see how all well Lake Central will do in the state meet. Um, I don't know if they're one of the favorites um in that meet. Um, really curious to see what happens there on that side of things. Um, on the girls' side, um, this is where I thought, you know, I was kind of surprised, you know what I mean, with how this one panned out. I mean, Oak Park, I mean, like, obviously we knew that they had a really rough regional um, with Detroit Renaissance. Um, they kind of really took out their frustration um, and won the girls' regional uh, on the Oak County and the girls' side with 84 points. Um, Rochester was second with 66 points. Wall Lake Central was third with um with um 64 points. Farmville's Mercy, of course, won the regional. Region nine was um fourth with 56 points. Wall Lake Northern was fifth with 35 points. Nova and Farmington tied for sixth with 34 points each. Clarkson was eighth with 32 points. West Bloomfield was ninth with 30 points. Lake Orion rounded up top 10 with 25 points. Oxford was 11 with 22 points. Boopy Hills was 12th with 20 points. Royal Oak behind Ellie Finch was 13th with 19 points. Troy was 14th with 16 points. Stony Creek was 15th with 15 points. Milford was 16th with 14 points. South Lion was 17th with 13 points. Um, North Farmington was 18th with 11 points. Brandon and Detroit Country Daredevil tied with 10 points each. Of course, early summer, the boys score. Um, South Lion East was 21st with 8 points. Adams was and Ferndale tied for 22nd with 7 points. Wall Lake Western and Berkeley tied for 24th with, fifth point, with 5 points. South Anderson Tech and Birmingham Seaholm tied for 26th with 4 points. Birmingham Marion was um, 28th with 3 points. Troy Athens, White Lake, Lakeland, Booby Hills, Cranbrook, Kingswood. Auburn Hills, Oakland Christian tied for 29th with two points. And Rochester Hills, Luther Northwest ended up 33rd with one point. So when you look at the girls' side, we talk Oak Park. We talk about the Knights. And this is a type of event where Oak Park could use, you know, their, their relays, their hurdles, and it showed. It really showed. I mean, Oak Park, we know what they have. I mean, there's a reason why they're one of the favorites to win the, um, to win the, um, you know, the state this year. There's one of the reasons why. They have the hurdles. They have the sprint relays. You really look at that scenario, that's a good recipe for success when you look at the situation, how it's folded. You got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, obviously, you know, obviously, you got to really look at what Oak Park did. I mean, Rochester, you know, second place, the Red Champ this year, 66 points. That's not a bad showing for Rochester. I mean, I mean, they did knock off Farm Sales Mercy, of course. I mean, like, they knock off, um, I mean, Rochester, of course, was in that regional with Oak Park. And that was a very tough regional for them. I mean, obviously, you look at, obviously, Detroit Renaissance in there, but Rochester scoring 66 points, that's that's a good showing for them. It really is. Um, 
Wall Lake Central, obviously, with the throwing dominance. They were third with 64 points. Kind of surprised Farms Hills Mercy took a little bit of a step back a little bit. I mean, won the regional, only scored 56 points. It's really surprised about that. Um, you know, kind of surprised, you know what I mean? You know, obviously, you know, Clarkson had was eighth with 32. Farmington was tied with Novi for sixth with 34. I mean, West Bluey with 30 points. Lake Orion was top 10 with 25 points. Um, Oxford was led with 22 points. Boopy Hills, of course, led by Maui Sosha. And the throws was 20 points. I mean, Royal Oak was 13th with 19. Troy was 14th with 16. Stony Creek round up top 15 with 15 points. So when you really look at it here, it kind of really was dominated by Oak Park. I mean, it really, it kind of showed the dominance that Oak Park had, especially in the mid especially in the hurdle relays, especially in the throw, I mean, especially in the sprint relays. I still think Oak Park's got some questions regarding in the field event area. I still think it got some questions there. Um, so that's something that, I kind of wish for Oak Park, the key for them next year has to be addressing their balance. I mean, they got to have more balance than what they've showed. Um, and I think that's going to come down to is, can they get in the middle school levels? You know, are they, are they just going to focus on, you know, a different level and, you know, get talent from there? But I, I really think if I'm Oak Park, I think you really got to look at their middle school program and say, you know, this is where we can get talent. I mean, we can obviously get some talent there. I mean, but... We'll see what they do. I mean, obviously, when you look at it here, um, it'll be interesting to say the least what happens there. Um, obviously, you got the state meet coming up. Um, of course, the division, division one and division two coming up. That'll be really interesting. Um, that will that will take place on June third. Um, when you look at the teams here, I think the favorite. Obviously, you really have to look at. On the girls' side, you have to really look at the favorite. It has to be, um, you know, Detroit Renaissance last year was the defending state champion. And girls' side, Oak Park has to be mentioned in this. And I think, honestly, I think this is where it's going to come down to is can Oak Park find a way, you know, to overcome their lack of depth and knock off Detroit Renaissance has been basically they've been their kryptonite all year long. I mean, they've been their kryptonite. And I think, honestly... I think that could be an area of issue where, um, you know, that could be a weakness for them is can they find a way, you know, to overcome their demons and knock off Detroit Renaissance? That's the key, I think, for Oak Park. I mean, can they do that? Um, I don't know if I see really anybody else in the OAA that could really threaten, you know, maybe, maybe sneak up on somebody and makes a noise. I really don't know if I see that. Um, and then you look at, and then of course you look in the boys' side. Obviously, you know. And I read Jared Purcell's articles. I read his articles. Um, but I think Rochester Adams is a shot in this thing. Don't ask me why, but I I just do because they have balance. I mean, people say, well, look at the west side of the state. You know how good East Kentwood is. You know how good Rockford is. I mean, yeah, East Kentwood's really good. They are a machine. You look at, obviously, the west side of the state. You know, when you look at it here from a map. I mean, like, when you look at it from a map. So, I think, honestly, um, God, I think I got my Michigan wrong here. Um, but, but when I look at the west side, the west side, usually schools west of 127 have been really good. In, in track and field, they've been really good. I don't know if I've seen maybe a team from the east side in the boys' side. I don't know. I got to look at my archives here. I got to look at the history here. But I do remember, you know, a lot of, you know, when you look at track and field, you really got to look at, of course, okay, who's been the dominant team? Who's been dominant? West side of the state's been really dominant. So when you really look at it, that's really what it is. It's been the west side of the state has been really good and really dominant all year long. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, it's been clear. Clear as day. Um, what I think what I think's happening here. And now, I think Adams has a chance at this thing because 
I think their depth their depth can be an issue. Their balance is it they're ba- they're balanced. They got enough re- they got relays. They got their they got the distance to do well. I mean, I think they could score. I think Adams has a chance in this thing. I mean, and I'm honest with you. I think Adams has a great chance at this thing. Um I don't know if I see really any other OA teams really doing well in this thing. I really don't. But over out in um Rockford. I mean, I think that's where it, that it is issues at Rockford. And I expect it's going to be very interesting on Saturday afternoon over there on the west side of the state. I don't know what the weather forecast is calling for. Could be some spotty showers. Who knows? You know, I know we're in a heat wave. I mean, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, when you look at the last week of track season, you got the Oakland County Middle School meet coming up tomorrow. I mean, we're filming on Wednesday, but, um, but Oakland County Middle School meet's coming up over at Clarkston. And I think that's going to be interesting. I mean, the future, the future track, you know, coming up over there. So that'll be very interesting um, over at Clarkston. Um, and then, of course, you have Friday and then Saturday after the state meet. And then that's it for track and field for the season. You know, so, you know, and then, of course, you got others going on as well. I mean, we're going to talk baseball softball as well. I mean, that's going to be really interesting. Um, and then, of course, you have lacrosse still going on. I mean, we just had golf regionals, but it'd be interesting to see. I mean, across um, across quarterfinals, we just had that in the guys. Um, on the girls' side, obviously, they're still going on um, as we speak. Um, but we're gonna preview. Obviously, we're gonna go for um, we're gonna go preview baseball and softball, and I think this is gonna be really interesting here. Um, when you look at this, when you look at it here, we've already started play, um, with baseball and softball, obviously going into the, um, you know, obviously, you know, we look at, of course, softball first. Um, obviously when you look at softball, I mean, you know, you gotta look at, of course, um, you know, we're going to look at first district number 20. This would be at North at Farm Tales Mercy. Um, you know, all these games will be playing on Saturday. Um. Farmtail's Mercy taking on North Farmington. I mean, Farmtail's Mercy, the ranked state. They have a very good pitcher. Everybody's been talking to me about, is this the year of the Marlins? Is this the year of the Marlins? I mean, they look, they look like the Marlins of old from the past. They look like that team to beat where they had, I remember back in the day when they had, you know, those teams and they took on um. Harper Woods, Regina at the time. Um, and we know how that rivalry was in the Catholic League. Um, I know Farm Tales Mercy's new rival has been Birmingham Marion. Um, but when I look at this district, and you look at on the other side, and North Farmington who's had a nice year. I mean, they had a they've had a nice year. But when I look at this district, I don't really see anything really touching Farm Tales Mercy. I mean, Farmington and West Bloomfield, that'll be a good game, I think. I think West Bloomfield will win that one. But then they're going to run into Farm Tales Mercy. And I don't really see how anybody's going to beat the Marlins considering, one, they're at home. Two, they have an all-state pitcher. They have balance. I mean, this is a really good team. Really is. It's kind of really hard to go against them. Really is. Um, District 22 is at Royal Oak. You got Royal Oak taking on A&T. And then Berkeley taking on Groves in all OA, um, all OA matinee. Um, of course, all the softball games need to take place on Friday and Saturday. Um, just for the record. Um... This one looks like it's going to be either Berkeley versus, I mean, I think Berkeley and girls will be a very interesting match. I, I think it'll be a good game between those two teams. I think Royal Oak will have no issue with a and I, I just don't think they're going to have any issue. Um, I'd be shocked if Royal Oak did get upset. I mean, I'd be really shocked if they did. But I don't really see it. Um, and then on the other side, I have Berkeley in, against Groves. I mean, like, I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be a good one between those two teams. I, I just think it will be. Um, 
But I like Berkeley in that one. I just I just think Berkeley, yeah, Groves won the blue this year. Berkeley, I think, has played more tough competition. I, I I just really have seen it with them. I just think that Berkeley has played a little bit more tough competition. Then what I see is the Battle of Woodward in the um district final, which I, which which you, you have either Catalpa or Lexington. Catalpa or Lexington. I mean, when you look at it here, I mean, like, when you look at, especially in softball, I mean, I mean, football, you know, it's Catalpa. Boys basketball, I think it's, it's leaning Catalpa. Girls basketball, it's, it's, it's leaning Lexington. Um, but in softball, I think it's leaning Catalpa. Because when you look at it here, Catalpa's done really well against Lexington. I mean, and I don't really see how it's going to change. Um, so, until Lexington can, over can, can overcome Catalpa, I got to take Catalpa drive over Lexington Boulevard. And if you want to know what I've been mentioning about this, you know, Catalpa Drive is where Berkeley High School is located. Lexington Boulevard is where Royal Oak High School is located. So that's pretty much what I'm going to say here. So I got Berkeley winning that district. Um, district 23 over at Ferndale. You got Ferndale versus Oak Park. Detroit Mumper, Detroit Renaissance. Not a strong district. Um, Ferndale, obviously, is going to be the team to beat here. I, I really like the Eagles in this one. They should move on with ease. I mean, I think they'll get by Oak Park pretty easily. And I think they're going to get by Detroit Renaissance. Um... And it's at Ferndale, too, which helps for them. Um, home field matters. So until somebody says something, I've got the Eagles winning this one pretty easily. District 24 at Growth Point North. Got Detroit Cast Tech versus Detroit Western. That winner is taking on Growth Point South. Um, and then Growth Point North taking on Harper Woods. Um, I just I see the battle of Growth Point here in this one. Um I looked at Harper Woods this year. Not as great this year. Um, I, I really like the um, Norseman here. I, I think Gross Point North will win this one over Gross Point South um, and move on. Home field matters here in this one here. I, I just think Gross Point North with what they have, obviously. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, District 25 over at Abdale. Um, I also met, forgot to mention Matt Mowry. He did a projections for softball as well. Um, most of them I agree with, but this is a district where I severely disagree with, um, Matt Mowry here, and it's the district over at Avondale. Um, you got Seaholm versus Bloompia Hills and Avondale versus Troy. Um, Bloompia Hills has a high-octane offense. They are really good offensively, but they give up a ton of runs. They give up a bunch of runs as well. I know Coach Dan Whitemeyer very well from his basketball days. Coaching freshman boy, freshman girls basketball at Bloomfield Hills. Um, but when I look at this team and I look at Bloomfield Hills, they could score. They'll score in bunches. Seahome could give them some problems. They could. I mean, they could. If if they have a if Seahome has a has a good pitcher who pitches well in this game, um, and shuts down their high octane offense, I think Bloomfield Hills could have some problems. Avondale and Troy, um, I think it'll be a good game. I, I just think that I can't go against Laura Guzman, obviously. Of course, Laura Guzman also coaches girls basketball at Farmington. So that's something I can't go I can't go against the Colts here in this one. And I think she's done a really good job um rebuilding the Troy program a little bit, taking over for the legendary coach Tom Callahan. Um and he's Callahan's done a really nice job of that program over at Troy. And then Guzman took it over the program. Um, she used to be at Rochester before taking the Troy job. Um, so she's been around. I mean, she's been around around the area. Obviously, you have Farmington for girls basketball. Used to be at Rochester for a while, and now at Troy. I mean, you know. So, but Avenue's a sleeper. I think if Avenue plays well, they're at, they're at home. Home field matters. They can get Troy some problems. I really do. So. We'll see in this one here. I really like. I know that. Um, I know that. Um, they're going Blue Bay Hills here, but I, I, I just think Troy's got something in there. I think, I think Troy with that magic of the past. I just think 
I think Cole's find a way and get this one done. I just I just think so. Um, District 26 is at Utica. You got Utica Ford 2 versus Northern Heights Stevenson. Troy Athens versus Utica. Um, yeah, they're going to say Troy Athens is a sleeper. Um, but something tells me Utica. I just think that the Chieftains, you know Utica is a tough out for anybody. I mean, they are a tough out for anyone. So, <laughs> I just think when I look at this one here, I like Utica in this one over Utica Ford. Um, I'm just going it safe here. I know the Oakland Press, Matt Maori, is going Troy Athens to win that district. Um, I'm just playing it safe. I really am um, in that one. So, until, until proven otherwise... I got to take the whole school. I got to take the Chieftains. Um, I just think Utica is going to find a way to win this one. Uh, District 29, of course, we just found out is Oxford who won that game against Davison 6 0. Um, now, Oxford's going to take on Lapeer and Port Huron, Port Huron Northern. Um, I said Davison would win this, but I was wrong. So I owe everybody in Wildcat Nation an apology. Because I think now Oxford's going to win this district. Because I'm not impressed with Lapeer, and I'm not impressed with neither Port Huron or Port Huron Northern. Really not impressed with neither team. And also Port Huron and Port Huron Northern have to travel. I mean, have to travel north on I-69 to M24. Um, and I know that there's a lot of construction on I-69 right now. So imagine having to go eastbound. You know, you got to go eastbound on I-69. And I, don't, I, think that's, I think that's closed off over there on M-24. So that's something to really work for if you're Port Huron or Port Huron Northern, you know, for both those teams having to play. Um, Lapeer not really having to travel much. I mean, obviously going down south from um, taking, I'm going down, I, going down on 24. Um, from Saginaw Street down on 24. Um, you know, all the way out to Ray Road. Um, so that is going to be, so Lapeer, it's kind of a short distance for them traveling to Oxford. Um, whereas for Port Huron and Port Huron Northern, having to travel from I-69 all the way to, um, you know, the M-24, I mean, and just imagine having to go home and all that, you know, having to deal with the, um, road closure on 69, the ramp over there. I mean, I drove, um, you know, I passed I-69, um, the, that ramp in Lapeer. Um, just a couple days ago, and you know they had that thing closed off. I mean, so I'm really interested, curious to see how that one goes. But when I look at that district now, I think Oxford now has a chance to win this one. Um, especially knocking off Davison. Davison and Lapeer haven't been the same two teams, obviously. Um, so now when I look at it here in this situation, I've got to give the edge now to Oxford. To win this district. I, I just think, you know, with them, obviously. So, we'll see what happens there. I mean, I got to give the edge, obviously, to the, um, you know, to the Wildcats to win that one. District 30 at Lake Orion. You got Clarkson. Um, Clarkson, Waterford, Mount. I think Clarkson won that one. And then you have Clarkson versus Adams. And then Lake Orion versus Waterford Kettering. Um, great draw if you're a Dragon fan. Really is. Um, Lake Orion's got home field. They got pitching. They got offense. They should have no issue water for cuttering. Clarkson Adams, that'll be a doozy. That'll be a really interesting game. Because Adams last year won the regional, won the dist won a district title and upset Lake Orion last year. Lake Orion knocked off Clarkson in the district final. And we know how good both those teams are. Clarkson, we know about them. With Kira Tomey on that team. Um, Adams, they're well coached under Frangelovic. I mean, they're well coached under him. But it's hard not to go against Lake Orion here in this district because of what they got. They have hitting. They have some pitching. If Lake Orion's offense gets shut down by a really good pitcher, that could be some problems. But... I just think the Dragons have enough offense to really make up for, you know, I think they, they're going to be just fine this district. If things click on all cylinders, look out. Tell you that much right now. I think the Dragons could be a dangerous team. 
And I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens there with them. Um, so I got Lake Orion winning that district moving on the regional. District 31 at Romeo. You got Utica Eisenhower versus Romeo. And then Rochester versus Stony Creek. Um, this is going to be hard not to go against Stony. Stony Creek's had a nice year. They got two pitchers. One of them's Aaron Flynn. Aaron Flynn, we know, is a, um, also is a girls basketball player. Probably the number three option on that team um, for Coach Kellen James in their girls basketball program. But she's her ace. I mean, I'll tell you that much right now. She's very good. Very good player. Um, I think they beat Rochester. And I think they beat you to guys there. Pretty convincing. Yes, it's at Romeo. But I can't go against Stoney. I'd be crazy not to go against Stoney. Because when you look at that matchup, when you look at Stony Creek, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. It'll be very interesting. So we'll see what happens there. We're going to see what happens. Um, let's go now to some stuff. Let's go now to, to baseball, obviously. When you look at baseball, um, I think that'll be something to really watch for. I mean, obviously, when you look at baseball, um, District 16, um, Nobody Detroit Catholic Central did knock off Farmington. Um, so now it's Nobody Detroit Catholic Central takes on North Farmington. Novi versus Livonia Stevenson. Um, I know that Matt Mowry is going Novi here. Um, I just think Novi Detroit Catholic Central moves on. I, I, there's something in the air with the Shamrocks. There always has been. And I think Novi Detroit Catholic Central is a team that I think they could do very well in this thing. I mean, yes, Lavonia Stevenson is a is very underrated. I think Lavonia Stevenson can do some damage. I mean, they can make some noise. They can make an impact. I I think they could. They got a shot. Um, but I think when you look at this matchup, and you look at obviously this district, you know. I think nobody Detroit Catholic Central has no problem with North Farmington. They get the district final. Could it be Novi? Could it be Lavoni Stevenson? It's possible. But I think at the end of the day, I got nobody Detroit Catholic Central winning this one. So it's unfortunate for the OA with with Farmington and North Farmington. Um, but I, that's what I see. That's what I see. District 20, this is over at um, Gross Point South. They got Gross Point South versus St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Gross Point North versus Harper Woods. Um, what I'm seeing right now, I, I'm seeing the battle of um, Gross Point taking place again between Gross Point South and Gross Point North. Um, Harper Woods might have a say in this, but I don't think they match well with Gross Point North. Um, I, I think Gross Point North does move on here. Um, obviously, the... the um, Reputation of Growth Point North, obviously being a baseball power, um, says a lot. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm going to take the Norsemen to move on here past the um, Blue Devils. And I think that's going to be the case. So I think Growth Point North um, will move on in that um, re in that district um, into the regional. So that's something to really watch for there. District 22 at Royal Oak. Um, Royal Oak takes on Berkeley. Um, Warren Cousineau takes on Warren Mott. Um, Royal Oak and Berkeley, that's always a fun rivalry. And I talked about this earlier in softball. Royal Oak and Berkeley is probably, I would say maybe top 10 when it comes to rivalries. I mean, Royal Oak and Berkeley is probably one of my most favorite rivalries. Because it's in the Battle of Woodward. You got West Side versus East Side. I mean. I can just I can just write a book about this rivalry. I can also write another book about Lake Orion and Oxford. That, and that's that's pretty simple when it comes to rivalries. I mean, you look at of course the history, you know, Lake Orion and Oxford, that that should be their own documentary. That rivalry should be a documentary. Royal Oak and Berkeley should be a book. And the reason why I say this is because 
there are some chapters in this rivalry that has had some great moments and have had some rough moments. Now, when you look at Lake Orion and Oxford, you look at, of course, these two teams haven't met in the football playoffs yet. Could it happen this year? Maybe. I mean, I mean, like, so that's something to really watch for. But we know that rivalry in basketball and other sports has been really tight between those two. But Royal Oak and Berkeley, you look at that rivalry. You look at, of course, the student sections don't like each other. You have Berkeley fans chanting Royal Joke to Royal Oak fans. I mean, you have Royal Oak fans chanting to Berkeley fans. I mean, like, you know, that's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an unique rivalry. Really is. Um, we talked about the rivalry that's been in football. We talked about boys basketball. We talked girls basketball. We talked volleyball. I mean, I mean, when you look at it here, when you look at that rivalry, maybe with the exception of girls basketball, I mean, it has been dominated by Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley has really dominated Royal Oak. With the exception of girls basketball. And, you know, and then you look at, of course, you look at, you look at soccer, you know, Berkeley and Royal Oak, you know, they just played a couple days ago. Berkeley won that one. Um, and then, of course, you know, you're looking at a possible meeting in softball, likely going to be meeting in softball, and, of course, likely meeting in baseball. So when you look at this matchup, you know, there's a lot to prove if you're Royal Oak on Royal Oak's side. But when you look at on Berkeley's side, you know, Berkeley used to say, you know what, we've owned you guys. We've owned you guys in other sports this year. <laughs> I mean, you know, you look at track and field, you know, I mean, like that, you know, that's that's tight, you know, between those two teams. So when you look at Royal Oak and Berkeley, I mean, like, as I mentioned, that that rivalry, you can write a book on that. I mean, and then you look at other rivalries, you know, you have a documentary I can describe like Orion Oxford. I mean, Troy, Troy, Athens, you know, I can describe that in a, you know, a classic series. I can describe all that. Pretty simple. I mean, they've had great moments. But Berkeley Royal Oak, you know, that's a rivalry. Um, speaking of that, back to the baseball side of things. I mean, I talked to rivalries, a lot of rivalries here. But Royal Oak and Berkeley. That's going to be interesting. I mean, it's going to be a fun matchup. Who wins that game? You know, should move on to the district final. I don't think they're having any issue with either Warren Cousin or Warren Mott. I think whoever wins that game in the district semifinals wins that district. And then I did a comparison to whoever wins that one, either Lexington or Catalpa. And I'm going to take Catalpa. I mean, Berkeley's had Royal Oak's number, as I mentioned earlier. With the exception of girls' basketball, Roy Berkeley's had Royal Oak's number. The numbers don't lie. Stats don't lie. I mean, you got to look at it here, you know, and say if you're, if you're a Royal Oak alum, if you're a Royal Oak fan, you know, when's enough enough losing to your arch rival? When's enough? You know, is it in football this year? Is it, is it going to be in football this year? Is it going to be in boys basketball? Um, is it going to be, you know, I mean, you've been basically just annihilated by him with the exception of girls basketball. You've been dominated by him. Numbers don't lie. You know, it is what is. But when I look at this matchup here, I think Royal Oak's got a lot to prove. They do. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, stats don't lie when it comes to that rivalry between Royal Oak and Berkeley. It really isn't. But I got Berkeley winning that district. Um, district 24 at Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, CM versus A&T, Rose versus Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, and my prep zone's going with um, Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, I'm going to go Seahome because. Pitching. Pitching matters in this thing. You know, when you look at it here, if you have a good good offense against a against a very good pitcher, 
you always got to you always got to tip at the pitcher. So in Seals pitcher, I know has had a couple no hitters this year. I mean, Seals going to be interesting. Really will be. It'll be a heck of a district final. Now, pending if if um, Brother Rice can get by Groves, I mean, that could happen if Groves could pull off an upset. That would be a big upset if that were the case. But now you're looking at a possibility between Seaholm and Birmingham Brother Rice. And this could come down to a great pitching matchup against a great hitting team. I mean, the proven state power against an upstart. I mean, a lot of... This could go anyway. anyway. I mean, this could go anyway. I mean, Birmingham Brother Rice has been the proven power. They got home field. I mean, and on the other side, you got C home, and they got, you know, with their pitching staff. I mean, I think this is going to be a good game. It'll be a great game. I just like C home in this one. It'll be tight. It'll be close. But I think the Maples have enough. I really do. District 27 at Romeo. You got Romeo. I mean, the winner, Romeo Rochester. That one's taking on Adams. Stony Creek versus Utica Eisenhower. Um, like I said, um, Adams, they're dangerous. They're a scary team. Real scary team. Their senior class is very good. You got Bo Pico brothers there. I mean, yes, you got, yes, district's got a lot of great rivalries. I mean, Adams, you got Rochester's in there. Stony Creek, Utica Eisenhower. I mean, Romeo. But until otherwise, I got to go Adams. I think Adams could be in line for a deep postseason run. And then we know the success of that as a senior class this year. You know, the class of 2023. They have had a great, great year athletically. Great year. I mean, you won a state championship in boys soccer. You won a state championship in girls golf. You've been to a state final in football. Um, you've been to a state quarterfinal in boys basketball. Um... I got to think about what others. You made a regional appearance in softball last year. I mean, and your track and field team has got a, has won a regional and has a great chance, I think, to do well in the state meet. So, a lot to be proud of with Adams' senior class this year, class of 2023. I mean, I think to me that's going to come down to, as go down as one of Adams' greatest athletically gifted classes ever in the history of that school at Rochester Rants. I'm calling it now. Really am. I mean, Anza's class of 2023, that senior class, is going to go down as one of the top, maybe top five greatest classes athletically in Rochester Adams history. Calling it right now. I think Adams wins that in baseball. I think they're going to win it. I think they're going to win the um, district. Um, curious to see how the regional goes. Um, District 28 at Avondale. You got Avondale, Troy, Athens. That would have taken on Troy. Bloopy Hills versus Utica. Um, this is going to be interesting because it's a pick em district. It virtually is a pick em district because you have Rochester. At, I mean, because you have, um, you know, Troy is very interesting. I mean, Obviously, you know, Avenue Troy Athens had to play on that earlier day. Um, so one of those teams is going to play Troy. If it's Troy Athens, we know that rivalry between Troy and Troy Athens. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you know, when you look at rivalries, when you have to, um, you know, when you put in a documentary together or a book or a, um, or like a, a classic 30 on 30 series, you know, I mean, Troy, Troy Athens. The city of Troy, you know, you got the school on John R. Then you have the school off, the school near Long Lake. I mean, you know, Troy Athens calls, I mean, Troy calls Troy Athens a school down the road. I mean, that's a, you know, when you look at that rivalry, you know, it is very, 
competitive, especially in boys' basketball. I mean, I know both coaches, Coach Dave Scott and Coach Gary Fralick, very well. Um, I know in girls' basketball, that has been a nice rivalry as well. Football, you kind of you kind of want to look at it from either one side or the other. Volleyball, same thing. Um, and then, you know, but I think soccer is the biggest rivalry when you look at Troy and Troy Athens, obviously. Um, now, they're in different districts for soccer. Um, of course, Troy's in, the, in a very tough district. I think they're with Berkeley's in there. And then Troy's Athens went east. So... I'm curious to see uh, if, these, if those two teams were to meet, then we know that rivalry between Troy and Troy Athens is very strong, especially in soccer. Um, football, Troy's had Troy Athens' number released recently. So, but in this district in baseball, um, I know I'm going to, I know the MI Prep Zones picked um, Troy to win this district. I'm going to go Bloomby Hills because I think the Blackhawks really has the, um, I just think Bloomby Hills is going to do something. They're just going to do something. I think they're going to knock off Utica, and I think they're going to knock off Bloomby Hills. I think they're going to knock off Troy. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Really interesting. So I got Bloomby Hills winning this one. District 29 at West Bloomby. got Waterford. You got Orchard Lake, St. Mary's versus Waterford Kettering, and Lake Orion versus West Bloomfield. Um... This is going to be Orchard Lake, St. Mary's with either West Bloomby or Lake Orion. Lake Orion has not played well lately. They have really struggled. Um, West Bloomby has been up and down as well. Um, if Lake Orion were to find find their game back, if they could find their game back, um, then I think the Dragons have a chance. Um, they got to get hitting. They got to. They got to get. They can't give up runs. They, they really can't, and especially in this district, um, what Orchard Lake St. Mary's is going to do. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to see, but I think both teams have a chance to knock off Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I mean, like, I'm not giving, I'm not giving, um, I'm not giving e either any team, um, I'm not giving Orchard Lake St. Mary's this district, not by a long shot. If Lake Orion can find themselves that they were at earlier in the year, I think they got a great chance to knock off West Bloomfield and knock off Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Because Orchard Lake St. Mary's, to me, they don't, they look vulnerable. I, I just think they look very vulnerable. Because when I look at the, um, the Eaglets, yes, they're the defending Division I state champions. But, you know, when you look at it here, they haven't looked like this, you know, this mighty superpower. They haven't really looked like this dominant force. They really haven't been lately. Um, but they've been very good. Don't get me wrong. But I think either Lake Orion and West Bloom got a great chance to knock off Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I mean, that's how I'm seeing it. Um, now, others are going to say, well, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know, they've been one of the most dominant teams in the state of Michigan this year. Yeah, they haven't. But they haven't been... They haven't been, like, you know, this dominant force. So, that's why I'm saying I think both Lake Orion and West Bloomfield, either one of those two teams, have a great chance. But they got to go through each other. And the last time those two teams played, West Bloomfield took two or three from Lake Orion. Um, so, if you're Lake Orion, you've really got to find your offense in quick. If not, this is going to be a short stay for you. So, that's something if you're the Dragons, you really got to do. If you're Coach Andy Tramick, you have to really say to the guys, it's time to find your offense now. It's time to get that pitching back on track. I mean, because now it's either one, it's one and done. So that's something to really watch for. I mean, it'll be very interesting to watch for sure in that one. But, you know, I, I mean, people are going to say Orchard Lake St. Mary's going to win this district. Um... I'm going to take either Lake Orion or West Bluefield to win this district. I think both those teams, either or, have a great chance to move on and win this district. It'll be very interesting to see what happens there between in that, in that game. Um, and then you have District 31. This is over at, um, over at Oxford. Um, Holly will take on Oxford. Um, Holly, of course, had a big win the other night against Fenton 7-2. They're going to take on Oxford. And then Clarkson, Grand Blank. You know? 
this is going to be interesting. Clarkson and Grand Blank should be a doozy. Should be a good game between those two teams. Now, yes, Grand Blank is not the same team they've been last year, last few years. But I think it'll be a heck of a game between those two teams. Um, Oxford and Holly, I don't really see Holly knocking off Oxford. I'd be really shocked if Oxford did, um, if, if Holly did upset Oxford. I'd be really shocked if that happened. Do I see it happening? Probably not. Um, so, I like Clarkson to knock off Grand Blank. So now we're looking at a possible district final between Clarkson and Oxford. Um, this one's interesting because I think it's going to be, if I, even though I see Grand Blank knocking off Clarkson, but if Grand Blank, but if Clarkson took on Oxford, that would be really interesting because both those teams know each other. I think they play for a trophy now these days. I think they play for a trophy now. Um, that's what I'm hearing is both those teams play for a trophy now, which I think is pretty cool in baseball. I mean, obviously, when you look at trophy games, um, I think they're really, really cool. I mean, you know, you see a lot of trophy games in football, obviously. When you look at, of course, you look at the Double O Trophy, the um, L.O. Clarkson Trophy, the Battle at Woodward Trophy. Um, of course, um, I'm not sure if the city of Rochester's got like a three, um, three team for their trophy. I mean, like, I'm not sure if that is or anything like that. But if you play a trophy game, I think it's pretty cool. I really do. I mean, I love the fact when you play a trophy game, it really means something to the other team. It really does. Um, but Clarkson and Oxford, if those two teams were to play in the district final, it would be a really interesting game. I mean, it would be a fun game between those two teams. Um, now, the pundits are going to pick Clarkson in this one. Um, I think Clarkson does have a shot against Oxford. But I think Oxford has a chance against Clarkson. Couple reasons. Home field matters in this. Home field. You know, being at home, it matters. Being around your surroundings, it helps you. Helps you win games. You know, if you like being on the road, that's fine. But being at home matters, especially if you're a young team. If you're a very young team, being at home, it matters. But we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. Um, let's go to other sports here, obviously. Um, we got boys lacrosse. Um, I think that'll be very interesting here, obviously. When you look at, of course, the state quarterfinal matchups coming up here, I think the big one has to be, um, you know, you got Lake Orion and Clarkston in, um, in Division One, this will be that'll be a doozy there. Um, that'll be played on Saturday over at Troy Athens, um, and that'll be that's probably that's the only game right now involving OA teams is in boys lacrosse is Clarkson and Lake Orion. Um, this will be very interesting because I think it's going to come down to is can um is can you know, Lake Orion and Clarkson played in the regular season. Clarkson won that game. I think it was 16-12 to 12 was that score. Um, but it was a Clarkson win against Lake Orion. How does Lake Orion adjust from this? How do they adjust? That's going to be interesting. I mean, these two teams were supposed to play on Friday. But because of Clarkson's graduation, it got moved to Saturday. So. It'll be very interesting to see how, you know, now if you're Clarkston, well, also Lake Orion has their prom that night. So that is something to really watch for as well. You know, so I think that's a good reason for both um, for both of them to uh, move the date to Saturday, um, which is very interesting. It's at Troy Athens. Um, people, I've, I've had this debate. People have said, well, with Clarkson and Lake Orion, you know, why can't this game be played at Friendship Park? I mean, it's a good border between Lake Orion and Clarkson. I mean, it's separate. I mean, they have lights. Um, it would have been really interesting if that game would have been at Friendship Park. It really would have been. Um, because, you know, it's a short trip. 
for both schools. I mean, it's a short trip. Instead, both schools are going to have to go south into Troy, up to John R. Road, to Troy Athens. So, but if it, that game would have, if that quarterfinal game would have been at Friendship Park, you know, that would have been just insane, great atmosphere. Um, it would have been fun. But, you know, I mean, like Lake Orion and Clarkson, we talk about that rivalry. I mean, obviously, you know, that's been a rivalry for a while. Um, you know, in, in other sports, you look at, of course, girls basketball recently. I mean, Lake Orion beat Clarkson three times. I mean, prior to that, Clarkson had Lake Orion's number. What about Lake Orion's only beating Clarkson once in 2010? I mean, like, um, I mean, Lake Orion's beat Clarkson once in 2010. I mean, that says something. And then boys basketball, we know Clarkson's been very good. Um, so people have asked me about that question. You know, is Lake Orion Clarkson a rivalry? You know, that's a question. People have asked me that question. But in the, in boys lacrosse, this is going to be very interesting. I mean, Lake Orion and Clarkson have really started to build on that rivalry. That winner is going to take on Birmingham Brother Rice, most likely in the state semifinal. Um, which that will be very interesting if those two teams were to meet. I mean, like, you know, you know, I think it will be interesting because – these two teams don't like each other. Um, so I expect Saturday is going to be very interesting. Really will be. Um, girls lacrosse will be very interesting. Of course, they're still going on right now with their postseason. Um, with their um, regional going on. I think they're still in the regional semifinal. So that's something to really watch for. But back to boys for a minute. I think that state quarterfinal matchup between Lake Orion and Clarkson. That's going to be intense. That'll be insane. I think it'll be a heck of a game between those two teams. It'll be a really, really good game between those two teams. Uh, my final thoughts the week, obviously, you know, um, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Of course, we're in the thick of it here in postseason. We're in the heart of June. Of course, last week of track season, obviously. Um, you got lacrosse, um, you got lacrosse some um, quarterfinals. Um, last week of lacrosse is next weekend. Um, baseball, softball districts are underway. Um, two weeks till the end of the um, 2023, 2022-2023 school year. And then, you know, and then of course, um, that'll be it for that'll be it for the um for that for the season. And then you get back in the thick of it. And then you get to play, uh, and then we, and then we're right into fall, right in the football season. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I've already started to get an idea how football is going to look like this year. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Also, um, keep an eye on the situation in the girls' basketball at North Farmington. And over at um, Rochester Adams. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, sign off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you soon.